2024 is the year of machine learning and AI. This is was just confirmed by the two Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry that were announced last week, and the, both of them acknowledging a new era of machine learning and AI. And this is despite the fact that some physicists found it weird and controversial. How this is even possible? And this is actually reflected the complexity of problems that we are facing at the moment and today. It's more about finding the right neural network that can span the hidden rules of the system and be able to use the governing rules and applying them to the system. And this is reflects the complexity of the problems that we are facing today. It is not about finding something uh, foundational in science or in physics. It's more about how to apply them and scale them to larger systems. And Nobel Prize in Physics, John Hopfield and Geoffrey Hinton won Nobel Prize for their work on using physics and physics-inspired algorithms to construct methods that helped laying the foundation for today's powerful machine learning. In chemistry, it was the same, where it was awarded for the work behind the famous package AlphaFold, a deep learning system that can predict protein folding. AlphaFold is a game changer in the field of protein folding, which is a fundamental problem now in biology. It leverages machine learning and AI to predict the 3D structure of proteins. So in a nutshell, Nobel Prize this year mark a new era that we are no longer in the era of simple algorithms and the elegant formulas, but we are in the era of complicated solutions that could be done by complicated methods, and such complicated solutions could be realized and achieved by machine learning and the AI. Machine learning is a branch of AI that uses algorithms to learn from data and to make predictions. You can have a black box where you know the inputs and the outputs, and you need a function that can map those inputs to the outputs. So it's like learning the rules of playing chess without knowing it, just by observing the moves of different players and the outcomes of the game. And with that, you try to figure out the rules of the game without actually knowing them. And this is why it's called machine learning. You are sort of creating a machine that's able to learn from just observing inputs and the outputs. Typically, this is done by what's called the neural network that is named loosely after the human brain, and this is designed to recognize patterns. Hence, without knowing the rules, you can train your neural networks to learn about the movement just by observing the inputs and the outcomes. Traditional machine learning can struggle in finding ways in which you can build a neural network that can span the hidden rules or the governing laws of the game. For example, in chess, you wanted to train your machine learning model to learn the rules of the game from just the moves of the players that you have observed and predict also the future moves. However, when it comes to physics, you have complexity in the data, but you know the governing laws of the system, so you know them ahead. The problem is, when you come to simulate a physical system like a quantum system, molecular system, or some material, this is typically computationally expensive and time-consuming. When the systems are really large, the computational cost becomes prohibitive. For example, in quantum chemistry, the computational complexity that indicates the time and the resources that you need to simulate a quantum system, that grows exponentially with the number of particles in the system. For example, imagine you want to study the interaction of two molecules. Typically, the potential energy surface that describes the interaction between these two molecules is a function of multiple variables like for example the Jacobi coordinates, and hence the space in which we describe the potential energy surface is of high dimensions, and the computational cost is already high, especially when you use high level of theory or accurate quantum chemistry method. Another example would be about simulating a quantum computer of 50 qubits. This would require significant resources, where each qubit, the basic unit of information, can be in a state 0 or 1 or, or both in a superposition of zeros and ones at the same time. And this would make the simulations of such quantum system of 50 qubits is computationally complex. The computational complexity is like sort of increasing very high and hence we have to simulate a quantum system that can exist in 2 to the power 50 possible states. And hence 
One of the alternative approaches would be to use machine learning and uh, this is typically involves going through the pain of finding the right neural network that can learn about the rules of um, these laws of physics of the system enabling simulations of larger systems. Typically this is not easy all the time and this is where works like the ones of John Hoffeld and Geoffrey Hinton in physics comes in handy. Let's see how. Imagine you wanted to train your neural network to predict the handwriting of the letter T. I can write it in different ways and you can train your neural network to learn the patterns of the letter T. Each pattern is a separate image. Now, how to store the patterns of the image in a neural network and be able to sort them out? And the solution comes from physics and the concept of energy minimization. For a given quantum system like CO molecule, you can obtain the wave functions and the eigenvalues of the system. You can calculate the ground state of CO molecule using variational method. And you can sort out the states of the system based on the eigenvalues. And hence, you can predict the behavior of the system based on these sorted eigenvalues. And similarly, hopefully the network is emulating the variational calculations in chemistry, which is about finding the ground state energy. So for a given image of the letter T, we can assume that it's black and white, so we don't have colors, and then the pattern of the image would be about the pixels that have uh, black color and the pixels that have white colors. And the ones with blacks, let's assume that they are ones, and the ones with whites, let's assume they are zeros. Then hopefully the neural network takes the patterns of the letter T and try to link it to the energy value and tries to minimize the energy value that will lead to a stable uh, pattern. With that, every time you give a new pattern of the letter T, the neural network can predict the new handwriting of the letter T by minimizing it to a stable pattern and then compare the energy that's equivalent to this pattern to the ones that are pre-stored already in the neural network and then come up with the closest pattern. So with this, the work represents some milestone in the field of machine learning and the AI. And it is a great example of how physics can help in building the right neural network that can span the hidden rules of a given system. So the question becomes, was just the Nobel Prize in physics awarded based on the design of the neural network that can span the hidden rules of a given system? The answer is simply no, and this was stated by the Nobel Prize committee where it's, the work involves what's called the Boltzmann machine. In 1983 to 1985, Jeffrey Hinton, together with other co-workers, they developed an, uh, an extension to Hopfield Network called Boltzmann Machine. And this is a generative model, so it can focus on the probability distribution of the data rather than on individual patterns. And this has helped in setting up the scene and establishing the foundation for deep learning, image recognition, and speech recognition as well. And now you see why the works of John Hopfield and Jeffrey Hinton in physics comes in handy. Because if you have a system and you know the rules, the governing rules of that system, you can use the physics-inspired algorithms to construct methods that can help you in building a neural network that's efficient and can span the hidden rules of the system efficiently. This is because there is some elements in the neural network that will resonate with uh, some underlying uh, physical patterns or physical properties in the systems that you are trying uh, to study or you use it in your training. So the take home message of Nobel Prize uh, this year is that physics and computer science can come uh, together and be merged together to create useful applications in physics as well as in computer science. And this also highlights the fact that machine learning and AI will benefit a lot from physics-inspired algorithms and the physics-inspired techniques. We are no longer also in the era of discoveries that could be made by just finding beautiful analytical formulas. And in fact, the literature is dominant by works that were made in nowadays, but also in the past decade, by uh, works that were enabled by the means of computational modeling machine learning and AI. Please don't hesitate to share your thoughts, your feedback and your ideas with me either in the comments below in, below this video or with me on LinkedIn. Until then, see you.